Hi, this is Jeff Curto, and welcome to episode number 150 of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography. So, episode 150. You know, there were a lot of times when I thought, and probably a lot of you thought, I wasn't going to get past episode 10 or episode 25 or even episode 50, and here we are at episode 50, and I'd like to thank those of you who've been along with me on this uh, interesting camera position ride uh, since uh, 2006 when the podcast started. So here we are at episode 150, and I'm happy to be uh, still here, still talking about creative photography. And today I wanted to talk about the difference between photographing and viewing the photograph. And I'm going to start out with this statement. You, the photographer, you are not the viewer. You're not the viewer. Well, of course, you will look at the photographs that you make. You will look at them uh, on your screen or on your light box if you're shooting film, and you'll look at them perhaps in the developing tray, and you'll look at them uh, as they come out of your inkjet printer, and you'll look at them when they're matted and framed or on Flickr or wherever it is that you might uh, put your photograph out into the world. But you are not the viewer. You are the photographer. And there is a subtle distinction here uh, before both the viewer and the photographer that I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about and see if we could kind of dissect the difference between viewing photographs and, uh, and, and making photographs. Now, obviously, there's a difference between the two. But one of the things that I have often found, especially in teaching photography, teaching especially new photographers, is how important context is. A lot of photographers, as they begin photographing and begin exploring the medium, uh, they photograph whatever it is that they're interested in, which obviously is the, the most important thing for them to do. But oftentimes they forget about context and they forget about that viewer who is got, not going to know where the photographer was. Uh, where the photographer was, what else was going on. Uh, so oftentimes as a photographer, here we are out in the world looking at what it is that we're interested in photographing. And we've just walked up to that subject. We've understood its context and where it sits in the landscape or uh, in the interior or what that person's uh, face looks like and why uh, this portrait needs to be made at that particular moment. So we understand the context, not only in terms of space and where the subject is in the world, but also in terms of how we're feeling about the subject, how we approached the subject, what happened to us prior to the time that we approached the subject and raised the camera to our eye or set up the camera on a tripod. We have an understanding of what the subject is on a more inherent level uh, than does uh, the person who is eventually going to view the photograph. And that's a really important part of uh, photography for us photographers to remember, that we have to think about what it is that our viewers are going to see. How they're going to perceive the subject is an important part of how we go about photographing that subject. There's a corollary to this too, and that corollary is how the viewer sees the photograph. When we, as non-photographers, as the person who didn't make that picture, when we're looking at the photographs that, uh, that we're admiring, we have to be cognizant, we have to be aware of the fact that the photographer consciously left things out of the photographic frame or consciously included these particular things in the photographic frame. And we have to be aware of what else the photographer may have been influenced by as they approached their subject and as they began uh, to stalk the photograph and make the photograph that they want. So I'd like us to think about here just for, for a little bit and perhaps the next few times that you go and make photographs, whether you're outside in the world making photographs or making photographs in the uh, intimacy of your studio, uh, making still life images perhaps, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think about the context and I'd like you to think about how the viewer will perceive 
the context of what it is uh, that you're photographing. What will they see? How will they see what it is uh, that, that you're looking at? And what clues are you giving them to what else might have happened? What may have come before the moment that your shutter opened and closed? Or what may have happened after your shutter opened and closed? And simultaneously, as you are cruising the web or going to and simultaneously, as you are surfing the web or going to galleries or looking through your photo book collection or however it is that you are consuming photographic material, I'd like you to be aware, begin to think about what it is that the photographer left out, what clues they have left for you in the frame, and how they're putting those things together to tell the story of the photograph uh, that you're standing in front of. So you are not the viewer. When you're making photographs, you're not the viewer, you are the photographer. And you have to be aware of that viewer who is later going to look at this picture and need to have some understanding of what it is that you're trying to tell them about the subject. Beyond what it is that's in the frame, think about all of the influences that you have had up until the time that you release the shutter. And then again, simultaneously, as you're looking at photographs, Think about how that photographer who made those images began to think through the process of what it is that they would and would not show you. Well, thanks for joining me on this episode of Camera Position, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Camera Position, the podcast about the creative side of photography.